In today's video, I show you the MR anatomy of the posterior medial corner or an MRI. The posterior medial corner of the knee is located between the MCL and the PCL. To be more specific, everything behind the posterior border of the MCL and the medial border of the PCL. Everything in between here, including the semimembranosus tendon, is considered to be part of the posterior medial corner. And in this little corner here, there are basically five structures that are frequently named if you read articles regarding the posterior medial corner. And these are these five here. As I said, the semimembranosus tendon and all its expansions. Then the OPL, also known as the oblique popliteal ligament. And then the POL, the posterior oblique ligament. Don't ask me why they have these stupid abbreviations, which is really hard to, to remember. And then the posterior medial joint capsule and obviously the posterior horn of the medial meniscus. So these five structures here basically make the posterior medial corner. Today's video was specifically requested by one of my new patrons, Thomas. Hi Thomas! And basically as a pioneer patron he can suggest topics to me and I can make a video about it. And if you want to become a patron yourself and join my community, go check the link down below, go over to my Patreon page, you can see different ways to support me and we have specific content that is only available on my Patreon page and it's exclusive for my patrons. So go check it out and um, yeah, I have another patron, Steve, hi Steve, uh, he also joined me just last week. And if you go into the literature and have a look at the illustrations that they show in these articles, they are always very very fancy and even here in this one you have all these semimembranosus expansions here, then the MCL and behind the MCL the posterior oblique ligament here, even that one has different fibers and uh, as we can see here so the posterior oblique ligament has a capsular arm, central arm and all this stuff. You don't have to know this basically because all these structures you really have a hard time to differentiate on MRI. So. Um, and then in addition there is the oblique popliteal ligament, they even have five different types. I only show you here three because I think it's ridiculous for us to know as a radiologist. Now to make things a little bit easier, I give you a uh, approach here which might be considered wrong, but it reflects more the reality on what you see on MRI. So we have here the MCL and the MCL, as I mentioned, everything behind the MCL, so here the posterior board of the MCL is part of the posterior medial corner up to the medial border of the PCL. So the posterior oblique ligament is a structure that starts a little bit more distally and behind the origin of the MCL and some consider it just to be a thickened joint capsule and not a distinct ligament and there is some disagreement in the literature regarding this one here but you sometimes actually see the posterior oblique ligament very proximally as a thickening of the joint capsule. I will show you this later here. But typically it's then blending in with the rest of the joint capsule and you cannot really make a distinction further down. That's why it has this ragged appearance here on my illustration. So everything here in blue is basically the joint capsule. This is the semimembranosus muscle. As I said, it's part of the posterior medial corner and a very important dynamic stabilizer. Then here only partially seen is the oblique popliteal ligament, which I will show you right in a minute. Now all these expansions here of the semimembranosus tendons are okay. Sometimes you see how it's feathering out, but really don't try to make these distinctions here on MRI and you will never see like an isolated rupture of any of these. At least uh, I don't make this distinction and it's probably not helpful to count isolated pixel on an MR image anyways. So this is a more posterior oblique view here and again we have the MCL and here is the PCL and everything here in between is the posterior medial corner. We have the semimembranosus muscle and tendon and then we have the joint capsule here very prominent and the thickening up here is the posterior oblique ligament here blending in with the joint capsule and coming from the lateral side is the oblique popliteal ligament with all these different shapes that I have just shown you. And basically an easy way to find this is if you go to the lateral side on a sagittal view and then look where the fabella is and then you go medially and you will see some band-like structure going a little bit downwards here. 
and it's very thin and sometimes not really visible on Amora, but I will try to show you some images later on. And here a posterior view, and again we have the MCL, the PCL, and here everything in between is the posterior medial corner, semimembranosus tendon, joint capsule with the thickening here of the posterior oblique ligament, blending in with the joint capsule. You can even a little bit see the deep layer of the MCL here, PCL I already mentioned, fabella as well, and the oblique popliteal ligament here. In case you haven't already, make sure you hit the like button and also make sure to subscribe for future content. So this is a intermediate weighted fat saturated image here and we can immediately see we have the MCL here and the PCL here and everything between the posterior border of the MCL and the medial border of the PCL is the posterior medial corner including the semimembranosus tendon. Now let's start off with the posterior oblique ligament. So as I've said, go to the MCL origin here, which is here. So this is basically the middle layer or the superficial layer, depending on which definition you use. So we have the MCL, okay, all the way down. And now the posterior oblique ligament starts a little bit more posteriorly and starts a little bit more distally than the MCL itself. So let me make it a little bit bigger. This is the MCL. And you can start to see that we have some thickening here. This one here is the posterior oblique ligament. If you go up, it's inserting already here, while the MCL is inserting or originating a little bit higher up. So if we go down, we have first the origin of the MCL and then the origin of the posterior oblique ligament. And it's then blending in with all this joint capsule here, and some even argue that this ligament is not a distinct ligament. Occasionally you will see sprains of the posterior oblique ligament with the MCL still intact. That can actually happen. So keep always an eye here on this region here and try to make the distinction. But I will do a video about injuries at another time. So this is this stuff here. Then the other structure is the semimembranosus tendon. And you can see here on this example all this expansion. So you have the semimembranosus tendon and it's then feathering out here into these different portions, going anteriorly, laterally, etc., etc. So just know that it's blending out and always keep an eye on the semimembranosus tendon. Best way to identify the oblique popliteal ligament is going to the lateral side of the knee. Here's the fibular head and then going here to the region of the fibella. And if you scroll medially now here from this region here, you will see the posterior joint capsule and it's a little bit thickened at times. And this, you can see some band like structures here that are running obliquely a little bit downwards most of the time and then here blending in with the joint capsule on the posterior medial or posterior medial side of the knee. So this is basically your oblique popliteal ligament here. Sometimes it's also shown on coronal views let me see if we can see it here. So this is the lateral side. It should go from approximately to distally in an oblique fashion. And you can a little bit imagine that there might be some kind of fibers or thickening of the posterior joint capsule. But it's really hard to see. Sometimes you don't see it at all. And I wouldn't bother too much with describing isolated injuries here in this region. I have already mentioned the posterior medial joint capsule. So the only structure left here is the posterior horn of the medial meniscus here and this one is firmly attached to the posterior capsule here and you can have injuries or meniscal capsular separations here as well but again all this trauma stuff and especially for meniscal capsular separations i will do a separate video in the future so let's quickly run through these structures again in two different patients one or two so we have here the mcl pcl here posterior medial corner semimembranosus tendon, which is the most obvious part, and you can see how it's fanning out here and inserting at a very broad uh, side here with all these different expansions. Then we have this posterior medial joint capsule, this very thin black line here. So this is the joint capsule here. Then here we are at the level of the attachment of the joint capsule with the posterior horn of the meniscus. And if we go up here, we have the MCL and behind the MCL, this little thickening here is considered to be the posterior oblique ligament. 
Then the other structure that is missing is the oblique popliteal ligament and it should be running around here, basically part of the posterior joint caps. So we switch to a sagittal view, we scroll through the lateral side, here's the fibular head, we look where we would expect the fabella. If we scroll medially we start to see the joint capsule and any thickening here in this region, probably this one here is part of the oblique popliteal ligament. And here again the posterior horn of the meniscus and the joint capsule which is attaching here and the semi-membranosus tendon. And here again the same thing, MCL and here a little bit distally and posteriorly of the MCL origin we have the posterior oblique ligament here blending in with the joint capsule which is then attaching to the posterior horn of the medial meniscus and also fibers of the oblique popliteal ligament are inserting here into the joint capsule. We go laterally and we see the origin of the oblique popliteal ligament and this very thin black structure here as a part of the posterior joint capsule running all the way across the knee and then here blending in with these structures here. So this structure here is not always easy to depict and probably not so important. Semimembranosus tendon is obvious also with the broad attachment here and all these expansions and that's basically it. I would suggest you go to the radiographics article that I referenced and you find the link in the description down below and have a look at its anatomic section of the posterior middle corner and you will see that it's very very complicated if you follow all the true anatomy. And since I can't see it on MRI, I just follow my simplified approach. I hope it's helpful to you. Let me know in the comments below. And again, thanks to all my patrons for your continuing support and see you next week.